Indigenous fiber in our art. Featuring liberation through radical self-reflection. Cultural survival. My name is Ty Gould Jacinto, and I am the president and CEO of Native American Advancement Corporation in Bridgeton, New Jersey. And I'm here to show you that indigenous fibers are found in all aspects of everyday community, and we can all tap into the creative world to make a difference. And I have pictures here to, uh, with my husband and I at the very last powwow as well as my, my grandchildren and I, and I'm dressed in my full regalia. And then uh, the bottom picture shows me in the dance circle um, for the powwow. Uh, this year, our powwow is on, um, actually will be tomorrow, um, if, you're, if anybody's interested, the next two days, it's Saturday and Sunday at the Salem County Fairgrounds. And I believe it's our 45th annual powwow. Um, and what I'm wearing uh, is a mix of old and new. I wear, I like to wear buckskin, which is the old style, as well as um, I wear shells and clay beads. And I also have regular seed beads, trade beads. And I like the uh, cloth shawls. Um, and I also embellish myself with feathers. These are wild turkey feathers that are from here and hair pieces and various types of necklaces. Now, when we make our regalia, there's no two regalias that are alike. And we don't call it regalia, we don't call it costumes, we call it regalia. And everybody's regalia, this was made back in 2006. Um, I started a new one because my old one um, was when I was younger, but we add pieces and we add more embellishments each year to make it different. So nobody's regalia is ever the same. We are celebrated by our individuality and our regalia shows our individuality and who we are and, and our creativity um, through our life experiences and what animals that we, um, that we can relate with. So that's what you see here. Paving roads. Now we always say we're paving roads is because we like to say that we're making a life better for the children and grandchildren by, by teaching what our experiences are. And I'm the mother of five children and two grandchildren and I'm eager to pass on my Lenape traditions onto them. And if we do not persevere and teach, these arts will not continue to be passed down. And it's my pleasure to be able to pave roads for future generations. And this is the uh, picture of my daughter's 30th birthday a few years ago. And this is a picture um, this last fall of all my children together. Why? Indigenous arts are part of the fiber that makes our society. Each woven thought of brightly colored thread encompasses our teachings, lifestyle, survival, and contribution to this great land. The indigenous way of seeing provides the why to many unanswered questions to acknowledge the indigenous impact. Why do we need to know how it's made? Why do we need to see the beauty in nature? Why do we need to combine art with the usefulness of the object? And when we say combine art with the usefulness is that we have to make a pouch as what you see in these in the first two in the picture. We wanna make that pouch a very beautiful pouch because that pouch is also adding to what we're wearing, but it's also a useful object. And then there's a pine needle basket with a lid. And the pine needle basket with the lid um, has, has a, a beautiful shape to it um, to, to be shaped like the, the honeycomb. So um, we have to find, we, we mimic the beauty of nature and we embellish the beauty with nature as one with nature when we do our useful objects and it becomes art. And art is something that is created that is made to be one of a kind. Self-reflection. When we speak of liberation through radical self-reflection, 
we share how our work can contribute to a more understanding world. It is not radical, it's eye-opening. The beautiful and perfected, perfect imperfections opens the soul to the creative process and explore the necessities object. So if an object looks perfect, then there's really nothing more to do to that object. But if we embrace the imperfections of the object, then more creativity comes out. So here, um, this, the, the gourds that you see in front of the gourd greenhouse here, um, were just simply um, inspired by its shape. And when, you, when I meditate on what I want it to be, then it takes shape. And as I'm doing it, I find the imperfections to be perfect. Imagination. Art is any creative expression that leads to imagination using technical skills to make a valuable item into work or creation. Art is more than traditional painting, sculpting, writing, the sound of music and other examples. Artistic creation is an expression of the unspoken communication like a language. Art evolves out of the necessity through time, exposure to history, culture, values, personal interest, and the creation of new materials combined with the old. Now, if we just stopped using um, the old materials uh, and just use new materials, then we find our world to be very plastic. But if we combine the old materials with the new, like we have here in this pine needle pendant, um, then we then we create something that's even more spectacular. And adding the beads to embellish the circle created a brand new shape instead of just being a circle. So with the new world beads added to the old style of sewing the pine needles with the sinew takes on a whole new form. And then adding a, adding a wooden circle on the center to sew the pine needles around creates an open space where I was able to do the dream catcher stitch with a bead. So you can see adding new world with old world gives a whole new creative aspect on art. Culture through expression. As another, as a mother of five children, and their experience in school, I know firsthand how difficult it is for a classroom teacher to teach art. Sometimes teachers are not an artist because the school has mainstreamed everything as if we were buying it off a shelf. It makes it difficult to create using our own culture through our self-expression. And with today's society not allowing art to be taught separately and integrated within a classroom, it becomes more challenging. So if we are teaching um, a standard curriculum of cutting crepe, uh, uh, crepe paper or um, some type of paper in, into small pieces to make a mosaic uh, window, where's the creativity? There's not much creativity than other than placing the colored pieces in a, in, a, in a way that can create something. When we can just go into nature and hand, these are small baby gourds, and hand this to a child and tell them to hold this and find out, um, you know, with your background and their background, find out more information about what the gourds were used for. And then uh, the creativity will start flowing into something else. It's like, um, I, re I remember uh, one of my children in school, they were given pieces of paper and they said they had to make a snowman. And with those pieces of paper, my, my one child said, well, why can't I make it this way? Which which you know stymied the teacher and the teacher said, well, you can do whatever you want. You could think outside of the box, um, but we don't get that. I mean, you know, we see classrooms now with, you know, when they give the same pieces and all the, all the 
all the same art is done with, you know, making a snowman instead of handing the child the blank paper and saying, let's create something or the, or the object. And let's say, let's, you know, let's just define what paper is. Paper is made out of wood. And, you know, what would you do with this? Well, well, let's soak this piece of paper and add, you know, flour and water and we can make, a, you know, a sculpture. So um, it's, art is our own expression. And, you know, if the more culture, the more your own culture that you utilize, you know, with your background that you can offer for children, the more barriers you break down. Meditation, self-expression through art takes meditation. And we all have an artistic ability to teach. Hopefully everyone here will recognize this from this workshop. Everyone has a culture to share. It doesn't matter that the US is a giant melting pot. We all come from somewhere else. There's always a familiar spirit or vibration to some culture from our past or present. And it's a great idea to tap into your own culture or background to define a few things that you would like to share with your students. Um, and this is just a picture of more gourds. I do uh, gourds. I do a lot of gourd art. And I explain where the gourds come from. And I explain the uses of the gourds. And I explain that gourds are used almost on every continent on this earth. And how gourds have been used for 13,000 years. And that everybody's culture used gourds for one reason or another, just to break down barriers. Culture is art. When you express your knowledge, culture, or study something from within you and teach that to others, you bridge the gap, you break down barriers, and you are effective in a child's life. Even if you are from multiple cultures, you can study each and find a vibration and find a vibration or a celebration and choose each to teach. Your, this knowledge is exciting to your students to be a part of what your culture has to offer. We all have some artistic ability as an expression. It's who we are. And this is a dance fan. Um, it's a very old dance fan. And, um, you know, when it's really hot in the sun and we have to dance, you know, for our cultural events, um, this fan is perfect. It's art. You know, I hold it in my hand as art, um, but I also use it as a fan. Mainstreamed. The tragic aspect of how it is now is that we have mainstreamed life into a box and now call it curriculum for convenience. But if we look outside of the box, we will find creative ways to make teaching enjoyable through art. And if we do, we can find our natural resources from whatever culture that, that we tap into, even if we use the local culture of the Lenape here, and we can find ways to make and to find um, natural resources to make art. And uh, once again, this is a gourd um, embellished with pine needles. And then right next to it, I have alpacas on our ranch. This is a felted bear uh, made by a couple of my children. Common thread. Self-expression through art can be many things. We are finding the common thread like drums to be found on every continent. The beat of the drum represents the heartbeat of the living being. And the drum is found in every culture. And when we beat the drum, we all find a vibration that we can relate to. And there's so many different drums and so many different drum beats, but the beat, is, the beat remains the same. The sound remains the same. It is the, it is the sound of the stick and the hide and the wood. And it's a beautiful sound. And we can all vibrate to the sound of the drum. And we can make drums. The children can make drums. You can make drums from you know, hollowed wood. You can make drums from, um, uh, from cardboard. 
and you know the 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 sound of the drum and teaching what the drum does and and how it, and it affects everybody's culture um, is art. And this art is in every culture that is found everywhere. It's clay. Clay is found on every continent. When we look at the earth without imaginary lines, we see that we are flowing with endless possibilities to create with clay. And clay, um, clay can be air dried. Um, clay could be used in science class to, to learn what the compounds are and how it's hardened, how some clay gets hard and, and by air drying and some clay that has to be dried in the kiln and the fire. Um, but clay is a medium that can be taught in, in many ways. Clay can be made into vessels, um, clay, you know, the Lenape vessels with the rounded bottoms, you know, where they, where they put it in a fire pit, you know, and then they put the dirt around it so that it stayed up. So those are, those are different aspects that can be taught by using clay. And in clay, we can, we can make art from any continent by using clay. Any teacher can tap into their history um, by using clay. They can just research their cultural background. And then it opens the door for the children to express their cultural background if they know anything. And if they don't, they can vibrate to something. They will have a familiarity to something from using clay. Open the door. When we look at the tree, it has so much to offer in art. Without boundaries, we all realize that we are all connected through creativity. This common thread helps educate children on a human level and aspect. When we share who we are we, through our self-expression, we break down the barriers and then the children will also share with great excitement about who they are. You have opened the door for creativity then you will change their life and light that path of their future. And when I say, look at the tree, the tree has so much to offer. We take it for granted that we get paper from the trees, but it's not hard to make paper from sawdust and to show the children how that, you know, with parchment was made. It's not hard to show that after we make the parchment, we can bind it and make it into a book. So, you know, the tree has, and then you, you can use the pine, the pine needles to weave baskets. Um, you can use the leaves to crush and to make mosaics. So there's so much that the tree has. You can do bark art. Um, we, make we make barrettes and, and pendants from the bark of the white, bar uh, the white bar birch. So the tree bridges the gap because there's a tree on every continent. The tree is located, the tree is one of the universals like the drum and the clay. You can't get any more connected than a tree. There's a tree on every continent. We're all connected through the trees. Importance of your self-expression in art. Art is a terrific form to express your thoughts and your feelings and identity so that others can utterly understand you. Art is a language available to those who may be shut off. And it will help us learn about ourselves as much as it helps us know about others. It breaks down barriers. Self-expression is the expression of one's own emotions, feelings, and personality, or the, uh, the act of asserting one's individuality. Removing the rules and, in, and instruction opens the door to creativity for those you guide. You will gain knowledge of others through their artistic expression. And once again, this is what I'm talking about. If you tap into your cultural art and you, you use it as a, um, a guide and hand them the raw materials, you'll find that um, other cultures the children may tap into something that's from their past. They may vibrate from the same materials. The leather, of course, the leather is on every continent as well. Um, the leather is from the animal and the animal roams on every continent on this earth. 
So here we have gourds and leather um, on this on this pendant on this pendant that's a um, pouch. So it's a useful wear, wearable art. It's a pouch. It is critical to recognize why you do what you do. It will help you convey your personality, your opinions, or emotions through creative means such as painting, drawing, music, and more. Knowing why you do what you do is so important um, that if you study your background and this is why you like a certain form of art or, or art medium, then it brings, it just, it's critical to know. And then it brings, opens the door as to why you do those things. This expression is a social expression and forms a connection with your students. This expression allows others to experience and feel your expression. So if you are able to tap into your cultural background through art and you convey that to others, then others will be able to tap into theirs as well. And studying your background and what you and, and why you do what you do also helps you to understand yourself emotionally. And this is just the same um, piece of art in a close-up picture. Building empathy for better understanding. The beauty of self-expression is understanding yourself better and allowing others to understand you. Self-expression can build empathy, but it can also help us process and regulate our emotions. Self-expression in the arts can positively affect the mood, cognitive function, and overall mental health. This communication helps form social bonds, develops cultural values, and allows us to connect as humans fundamentally. Now, it's when we are creative, that's when we are, are at our happiest moments. When we are able to create something, we feel useful. We feel like that there's something, there's something that we can contribute, which also builds empathy. So what we so when we are at our creative level or highest creative level in art and we find what we like to do, it doesn't matter. It could be cooking, it could be culinary arts, it could be gardening, it could be arranging flowers or furniture, it could be learning, um, it could be learning how to arrange a house. Uh, there's so many different forms of art. And when we are at our highest level of creativity, that's when we find we are at our highest level of peace. And when we are at our highest level of peace, we're at our highest level of acceptance. So this is why art is so important, but finding what your art is through your cultural experience is liberating and others will also follow and understand you. Art is universal. Art can be universal. There's no language to images and color, and therefore anyone who views it can understand it. Art is thus a compelling form of communication that can span centuries and cultures, languages, and interests. And when, we, when we're inspired, this is a, just a scallop shell pendant um, with a flower carved, but when we look at it, we can, we can all see that it's a flower and we can all see the beauty of the object and that it's a, it's a pendant, um, but it's still in its same form and it's embellished with creation. Let's see how I use art to express myself. No art medium is better at expressing emotion than others, but some were more commonly used. With joy, especially, the way we express, it feels automatic. So I like to use gourds and pine needles and leather. Um, I rather use that in my art. Um, I also express my art with writing stories. Uh, dancing, I do, you know, dancing, singing, and music are all instinctual art that are used to express joy, but 
but are by no means the only form of art for pleasure. So it goes back to what I was saying before, when we are in our creative sense and we hold that object and that object is telling us what it wants to, what it wants to be, then we are at our highest form of expression. Lenape Arts Today, My Art Expressions, Thais Brightflower Gould Jacinto. For many thousands of years, Lenape Arts have been created. They are rooted in tradition, but also inspired by individual imagination and skill. Art made from nature evolved with the advancements of technology and changes in culture. However, creation has remained a unique process. The design of my Lenape art is from the heart and mindset that forms from deep within. So another way of saying that is this pouch is used with an ancient form of leather, but I hand sewed it with the natural sinew, but I embellished it with new world beads. So it's, it's marrying the past with the present to create my art. This is a scallop shell necklace. Um, also embellished with uh, leather and beans. And the scallop shell um, is also used in Lenape art. Understanding each piece I create represents the creator. Understanding the gifts of the creator and what is available to me is one with nature. I am inspired to create from the gifts of Mother Earth. I feel that I have the talent to create as it speaks to me. When someone asks for something to be made, this may take a little more time because the asking person is considered one with me and the art. The creation takes on the form that represents the asking and me together as one with nature. My creations take time, it takes thought, it takes meditation. It takes a purpose as to why the inspiration has become the creation. And when someone does ask me, it could take me a really long time to create that piece for them because it takes a lot of meditation because that art becomes one with me and that person that's asking and the natural process or the natural fibers that I use for that person. This is a uh, gourd. Also, this is a no face Lenape gourd dog. This is a hair pendant made with a scallop shell and it's embellished with beads, uh, with uh, natural clay beads, beans and shells. Preservation. Often we natives are portrayed as something that is from the past. We are alive and thriving and there are many underrepresented artist or never mentioned in mainstream media. Over the years, I have participated in various educational programs featuring Lenape traditional arts at various functions to share my knowledge. I also publish a series of books to pass on the information about the tribe. I created video materials aimed at a deeper understanding of Lenape culture and artistic expression. And what you see here is another baby gourd used um, with ink, inks and also paint. Uh, this is a grapevine, um, grapevine dream catcher. Uh, uh, it's more made into the natural sense, but the original dream catchers were made for fishing nets. Now we use them as art. Children's books. I offer imagination that brings the past to life. I wrote Seek the, Seek the Better Place to add to the tale of the turkeys, the turkey's detailed tale, which was my first book, the creator's great soup, the blossoms of bright flower, which is pictured here, the wishing doll, Whisp, whisper wind song, he talks to birds, precious Kohansic Lenape crabs, Kohansic Lenape village tales coloring book, to include our people in the history books. And so far, these are the only books written about our people that are not a, a, a third person, third party story about who we are. These are written firsthand. Um, yes, they are fiction and yes, they are just 
um, stories, but they also have meanings to all the stories. Um, the Blossom of Bright Flower book is an anthology. It's a collection of all my poetry that I started writing as a child um, until a few years ago. Um, but these are the only books that are existence in our in our person in our personal tribe, the Nancy Copeland and the Napi. Here's another leather pouch embellished with beads. Native inspirational books. I offer inspiration that brings meaning to life. Like all others, sharing stories with my children and grandchildren and future generations is a part of my legacy. My inspirational books, The Way to Riches is What You Think and 2021 are self-help inspirational works to help with integrity and prosperity from a native perspective. And a part of my book series, I also have a podcast called The Art of Prosperity, which is found on um, all the, all the uh, podcast networks. Um, but each, each month we go over a new chapter in each, in each, each of the books to help others to uh, gain integrity and prosperity on a native perspective. And here's another scallop, or here's another picture of the scallop shell pouch. It's a close up. From the now, we are aware, and it is evident that we are significantly underrepresented in movies, commercials, and television, and primarily as a subject of books. And many artists should be acknowledged and encouraged to publish their stories. And I'm incredibly excited to join such a small group of talented Native American artists. It took much courage for me to put my stories in print and to display my talents, but I did it. And if we do not share it with you, then you will not remember us. This is a picture of my father and I, as we look at the Kohansic River, which is our homeland here in Bridgeton, New Jersey. And here's another beaded pouch. This is a very large pouch. Um, this is leather with uh, embellished with beadwork. Now I'm gonna go over the infinity spiral pine needle art in more detail. This is one of my, this is one of my specialties. Here's a close up of what it looks like. This is a basket with the pine needles woven with sinew. Um, this is one of the older styles. This is the more rustic style, but the basket is made to be used um, for different objects. The longleaf pine tree. The infinity spiral that I make is made from the longleaf pine tree. And a full grown tree has between eight and 18 inch long needles that turn golden in color. The longleaf pine forest once encompassed more than 90 million acres of the North American landscape. Today, only 3% or 3.4 million acres remain. And yet longleaf pine forests represent some of the world's most biologic, biologically diverse ecosystems. This is a picture of one of the pine trees on our tribal property here in Bridgeton, New Jersey. Preservation. The longleaf pine ecosystem provides a critical habitat for 29 threatened and endangered species. Those threatened and endangered species include the giant tortoise and the indigo snake. The longleaf pine preservation is crucial, not just for the ecosystem, however, to maintain our ancient Lenny Lenape culture. And this is a picture of what they look like at the, bed, at the foot of the tree. If we do not have any pine trees, with the long leaves, how do we create our pine baskets to continue with our traditions for our children to learn how to make something from natural resources and what the creator has given us? Our tribe, the Nancy Coke Land and Lenape here in Bridgeton, New Jersey has made a conscientious effort to protect the longleaf pine and its habitat on our, on our tribal property. And we tribal members have access to the needles for an ancient form of art form creations. And once again, this is a barrette 
um, that I wear that you saw uh, when I was wearing my leather regalia with the feathers that goes on the back of the head and uh, a piece of a pine needle basket. But if we don't have the pine trees, there's no way to continue with the pine needle art. This is another hair piece that was created in 1995 with a split stitch and embellished with shells and leather. And here is a basket that was created in 2008 with a split stitch and it's embellished with a shell, bone, beads, brass beads and a feather. And this basket sits about six inches high. Pine needles around gourds. This was created in 2016 with a, with a wrap stitch. Pine needles are used to embellish other types of art as well. So this gourd is embellished with um, pine needles and you can see the wooded ends are still on there. They were not capped off to give it more of a texture on the art. And this is a close up of a pine needle basket next to the lid. Now I'm going to go into my no face ancestor gourd art. The history of the gourd. The main gourd native to North America is the curcubita species, including the squash. One of the earliest domesticated types of the bottle gourd has been discovered in archeological sites dating back to 13,000 BCE. Gourds may be the earliest plant domesticated by man and many crops include the pumpkins, cucumber, squash, loofah and melons. So this debunks the three sister theory that we only planted three things in a garden because there are many different types of gourds and many different types of pumpkins, cucumbers, squash, loofah, and melons. They're all from the same family. So this was a staple and it still is a staple to our people. So, uh, and this picture shows some of the gourds that, um, that are drying that will be made into artwork um, and then surrounded by some of the no face gourd dolls. The uses of the gourds. The word gourd simply means the fruit of the plants in our North American species. A gourd is the hollow and a dried shell of a vine fruit. The hard shell gourds can last forever and become a soft wood. Gourds were used throughout the years as dolls, tools, musical instruments, art, food, utensils, boat floats, jewelry, spiritual uses, containers, and more. And the use of, I mean, the, 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 it's gourds are just like the pine needles. We have these seeds that we have in our hands and we plant these seeds. These seeds are our ancestors. These seeds are the seeds of the fruit that was planted 13, that was found 13,000 years ago in this same area. And without the seed, there'll be no more fruit. So the seed is the ancestor. As I plant the seed in the soil, then I plant that in my ancestors. And that seed becomes one with me. And that seed is preserved with each gourd that I plant. And this depicts some, this, these are two hanging on the greenhouse and some that were done and dried from last year. And I've created a gourd garden that maximizes the space to grow as many gourds on a small footprint. I raised the gourds on a hanging hoop house that allows the vines to climb as high as possible. And then the fruit can hang until it dries enough to be stored. So this is another way that we, we mix the ancient with the new modern technology. And without this gourd greenhouse, this would take up a large footprint on the earth, which we don't have any longer. So now I can maximize the space by using modern technology to grow my ancient art form of gourds. And there's many generations of seeds in this picture. This picture represents generations of the ancestors. The Finnish no face ancestor was created in 2016 from ancestor seeds. 
The gourd itself was grown in 2012. The raw gourd that you see that is not cleaned was grown in 2017 from ancestor seeds. And the clean gourd was grown in 2015 and is now ready to be created into something. And finally, there are new gourds growing in this picture in 2020 that you see hanging on the gourd house. And gourds must dry for at least two years before they can be made into anything. The no face ancestor, the Lenny Lenape never put faces on any objects for fear that the spirits may overtake the object. And that's why you saw earlier in the dolls that I, that I create, we create dolls with corn husk, with leather and with gourds. And when we embellish them, we never put a face on it. But if you look closely in the picture, you'll see the perfect imperfections and you see the material that has its own beauty as if it were its own face. And this is embellished with beads and shells um, and um, simulated hair and leather. And this is a side view. And this is modern technology mixed with an ancient art form. So that's why if we do not use modern technology, then we, we, will not, we will not continue. We have to be able to use whatever resources that we have to make us grow, to be able to create with the new art forms um, by using old materials and new materials together. And this gives us our artistic expression and these gourd, this particular one, this was also embellished by using um, the wood burner, uh, the wood burner tool. And uh, I used beads and metal and simulated hair and regular paint, as well as dyes and stains. And we can, uh, and I also do dye um, my gourds with vegetation that I pick myself um, and as well as with paint. And many items can be made from gourds and they are so versatile and they, uh, they can use, you can use for hair, um, hair and clothing ornaments. Um, they can be used as hanging, they can use bowls and spoons. So um, gourds are a universal item that can be used that can bridge the gap because we can study the gourd from every continent. There are gourds on every continent. They can also represent a story, um, as you saw earlier. Well, this is created in honor of the new water bearer age and the return of the dwarf, dwarf planet that makes its appearance during the harvest moon during the new water bearer age. And I created the stand from a fallen cedar tree in my yard. Here's a close up picture. And um, these were used by, um, this was, this was embellished by ink and then uh, embellished also with pine needles with beads. It's a close up of the dwarf. Um, the dwarf planet has a message in the pouch, which is simply my herbs um, to bring peace and healing to the new generations. And here's another no face. Um, you can see the imperfections, the perfect imperfections that came out um, when this gourd was being processed. Um, when this was clean, these imperfections were not there. They were not visible until it was uh, painted and polished. And then the perfect imperfections came as though it were the face of the material itself. And it's a side view. So we never, we, we always embrace the perfect imperfections. Uh, we never try to cover them. We embrace it because that is telling a story in itself and what this gourd, you know, the ancestors grew and how nature and, and the creator wanted it to be. And it was just embellished using the imperfections. This is a wampum belt made with the um, shelled wampum beads and leather and sinew. This is a turtle shell pouch uh, made from a whole turtle. Uh, it's one of the water turtles. Um, they don't lose, they don't have two parts to their shells. 
like some of the box turtles. And then it, the pouch itself is leather on the inside. And here's another uh, turtle shell pouch. This is from the Eastern mud turtle. And um, this was also embellished with beads. And these are also one piece shells. The Eastern mud turtle is a one piece shell, unlike the box turtle, which turns into a two piece. And this is a clam, I mean, a scallop shell pouch. And this is also embellished with uh, clay beads and beans and shells. And these, this is actually two shells that are sewn together so, to make one pouch. So if I open the flap, then you can see inside of the shell. And this is a beaded belt made with the European seed beads, the Czechoslovakian seed beads. And if we dig back further, even though the beads were made in Czechoslovakia, the original beads were made in the Orient. And for more information, please visit taigurhacinto.com or you can download my app called Indigenous on either Android or Apple. And I thank you so much. And if you have any questions, you can just contact me through there.